Welcome to the Build My Sports Biz Show, where we talk about how to create, build, and scale your own local sports training business. Let's go! It's time to get started with your host, Ben Neighbors. The show starts right now. Hey, what's up? Welcome back to the show. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, and this is a new series that I'm going to be doing probably once every four to six weeks. And basically I'm just going to be going through the DMs that I've received on Twitter and Instagram. And if you're not following me there, just type in my name. It's Ben Neighbors. Same way it's spelled on our YouTube channel. And um, go follow me there. You can connect with me. Shoot me a DM. I'm just picking the, I would say, the the best questions. Uh, and I'm going to use those questions here on the podcast and go into depth. And I think these are all questions that I chose today that coaches at one point of their career, they're going to end up going through. Um, and so I hope this helps you out. So we're just going to dig straight in. So the first question and I chose this as the first one because I think this has been one that I've t- really experienced and a lot of coaches ask me this all the time, which is, Ben, when you started your business, did you have people telling you to get a job instead? And I think if you sat down and talked to any person who tries to start a business, there's always going to be people in their life who tell them not to do it. The thing that I've realized, and this is like a golden rule that I've followed over the last, I think seven years, I've really stuck to this, is when I have a business question or if I have something I need to do within my business, I'm never going to seek advice from someone who hasn't run a business before. And this is a great analogy, but if I have to get brain surgery, right? I'm not going to go to the grocery store and ask someone to give me advice on, you know, what I should do. I'm going to go to a brain surgeon. I'm going to go to a specialist. And I think too many coaches out there, they like to talk to their buddies about it that have normal jobs. They like to talk to their parents about it that probably don't want you to get into business and what you need to do though is surround yourself with those who have done what you want to do and personally that's why i started the inner circle mastermind so i could create that community for coaches who need that help who need that guidance and who need that accountability and to answer the question yes there was only four people for the first four or sorry probably two or three years there was four people in my corner who actually supported my idea and they wanted me to do it and everyone else didn't they thought i wasn't capable of doing it they thought i should just go get a normal job i mean i heard that so many times like from old friends who would be like you know ben like why don't you just get a a normal job like you're going to be able to make way more money um and that was the thing like every single one of my friends back then didn't have a business and so I never felt like I could actually talk to them about what I was doing or what I was going through and I would constantly surround myself with those who wanted me to just get a normal job and again this goes back to my golden rule you know I wasn't talking to anyone really um, that in my social circle I'm talking about like my friends that had a, a business everyone had a job and so they thought it was weird at the time that I was wanting to do my own thing and they didn't get it. And, you know, the four people who actually like supported my idea, it was my mom, my dad, um, they're not even married, but I would was get counsel from them. Um, and then my two brothers and that was it. And what I realized though, and this happened, you know, this took me a while to figure out, but I started to realize that some of my friends, were very toxic with the way that you know I thought about myself, and 
I had to make a decision. I, I think this is in 2011, where, you know, my buddies would text me on Friday night and they'd want to go out and drink or do whatever. And it got to a point where I was like, you know what? I, I can't do this bull crap anymore. Like, I need to hone in and I need to find a mission and I need to stick to my mission. And I'm not going to, you know, hang out with people and be distracted just because, like, I want them to be friends with me. And, um, and I remember, like, a couple of my close friends back then used to get really pissed off at me because, like, I wouldn't go hang out with them. And I had to tell them straight up. I was like, look, like, I'm going to do this, and you're either going to be cool with it and you're going to support it, or you're not. And if you're not, like, I'm chilling. I'm, I'm going to just go do my own thing regardless, with or without you. And not everyone could understand that. And <laughs> for me personally, I mean, I, I've shared this on other podcasts before, but with stuff like this, I, I can cut ties very quickly um, with people who aren't loyal to me um, because I'm a very loyal person. That, that's just how I am. I'm very loyal to those who are loyal to me, and I'm very unloyal to those who, who actually don't like, have my best interests. And I, I think life is too short to spend time with those who don't want to build up your mission. And if you don't have a mission, you need to get one, okay? And what I did, and I, I've told this to a couple of clients, but I seriously had one weekend where I was like, you know, F this. Like, I'm, I'm just going to create a new identity. And I went to uh, T-Mobile. I got a new phone number. And anyone who was not in line with my mission at that time, like, seriously, I haven't talked to them. <laughs> I haven't talked to them since then. Um, so I have a new phone number. If, if they want to find me, th they'll find me out at the field um, or like, I don't know. But I had to make a decision to where I was like, you know what? I'm only going to surround myself with those who do build me up. And during that time is when I found my first business mentor. And after that, that, that really opened my eyes to like, man, like what have I been doing these last couple of years? Like I've just been hanging out with, with people who didn't build me up. I, I, I always thought negative about myself. And once I surrounded myself around someone who actually believed in me and could give me great advice, that's when my, my mindset completely changed. And so, yes, most people, I would say 95% of people um, told me just to get a normal job. Now those people, like, I mean, like I said, I'm not friends with anyone like that, and I won't be friends or surround myself with people who are like that even to this day um, because most people know what I do now and they, they're not going to question it um, but you know at the beginning of your business everyone's going to doubt you that that's just that's just how it goes and I think you can use that to fuel uh, your business and use that to be like you know what like I, I don't need to prove them wrong I just need to prove myself right and that's the way I look at it but I don't care who it is. It could be me or anyone who's starting any type of business. There's always going to be those who doubt you and tell you to get a job. And uh, you know, luckily, I persisted and and I had to create a new identity. And that, to me, was is something I would advise you if you're listening to this. If you have people who are telling you like, "Hell, don't do that. Like, you should just get a normal job. Like, or you won't make money." That's the most common one I heard was, "You'll never make money." training kids and now like i mean i teach coaches how to make money <laughs> it's, it's pretty ironic how that works um and we have coaches who make you know well over a hundred thousand dollars a year that we help um and so that hopefully uh hopefully that answers the question there uh all right let's go to the second question this is also a good question um if you follow me on instagram you probably notice this but the question is, why do you wake up so early? And I think the, the real question to ask is, why do I go to sleep so early? Um, because if I was up to like 2 in the morning and I wake up at 5 every day, then you know I'm not going to be able to function as a human being. So personally for me, I have a sleep schedule. I have an alarm on my phone 
that goes off every single day at the same time. And that alarm prompts me to like relax, get ready to go to sleep. And I like going to bed at nine o'clock. And that's not for everyone. Like, I'm not going to tell you to go to bed at nine o'clock. Um, I'm not going to go to your house or your apartment and, and turn the lights out at nine and say, hey, you need to go to bed now. <laughs> but for me, I like going to bed early and I like waking up early. I wake up typically like the latest now would probably be at five. Um, I like waking up probably between four and five. And um, I don't have an alarm that goes off. I just wake up and I start my day. But the reason why I wake up so early is because I don't like to wake up late and and feel like I have to catch up with my day. And that's the way I feel now. You know, waking up early allows me to crank out the number one most difficult thing I needed to do that day. I get it done like within 30 minutes of me waking up. During the day, I have more obligations. In the morning, when no one is awake, no one's bothering me, no one's talking to me, I'm not looking at my email, I'm not checking Instagram, I'm not looking at social media, like I can focus on the number one most difficult business related activity and without having any distractions, like zero distractions when I wake up. And that's why I like doing it though. And I also have this mindset, this is something I've shared on the podcast a while back, but I have this mentality that, you know, when I wake up in the morning, I always envision that there's another coach out there in my city who's trying to steal all of my clients away from me. They're trying to create a better program than me. And I have to wake up with the mindset of being like, no, F that. Like, this is going to be you know, my thing that I dominate with. And there's not going to be another coach that will outwork me. And that's how I like to operate my day. And that allows me to operate with a sense of urgency versus being like, oh, I'm going to wake up at eight. Because uh, if I wake up at eight, if there's another guy working harder than me, he's going to wake up at five or six. So I know just mentally waking up earlier, it just gives me the edge. Um, it just gives me more confidence. And I would recommend, you know, if you want to do that, you have to change your lifestyle. Like <laughs> you can't watch Netflix at midnight or watch ESPN at two in the morning and then expect to wake up at five. That's just not going to work. So you have to be willing to cut out a lot of things. Um, and for me personally, I <laughs> I wish I could sleep in. I wish I could eat Doritos all day and watch Netflix at night. Um, but that's not going to build a successful business. And um, so you have to really make decisions based on what's best for you and, um, and where you want to go. All right. But waking up early is huge. And that's one thing. Like, if you're in our inner circle uh, mastermind program, like, I talk about that quite often. I talk about like exactly what I do when I wake up and coaches that have been in that program that are starting to make like massive changes with their business. I've noticed one thing in common. They all are starting to wake up earlier and they also know what they're doing every second of the day, which is like a completely different topic. Um, all right, here we go. So question number three, should I start a podcast so kids and parents can consume my content? And the answer is yes. Um, and there's a couple of coaches this year uh, who took my advice on that and they have their own podcast. Um, and if I'm you, like, of course I would do that because if you think about it, the kids that train with you are only going to see you once or twice a week. If you have something in addition to share with them, that they can listen to on the way to school or on the way to soccer practice or on the way to their soccer game or their basketball game or whatever sport you coach. That is going to position you more as the authority and more as the mentor. And it doesn't mean you need to have, you know, one hour episodes. It means like having something that's like five or 10 minutes that they can consume. And trust me, they're going to be in the car. <laughs> like, they're all, all those kids and the parents are going to be in the car. And so I would create something that goes out like once a week and just stick to it for the rest of the year and say, you know what, I'm going to do this and it's going to be fun. Like don't put pressure on yourself and just use it for the kids that, that you train. And um, I would 100% do that ASAP. 
And how do you do that? Well, I mean, there's a lot of different ways to start a podcast. I would just go to Google and, and say, how do I start a podcast? Because um, I could create a completely new episode on you know, exactly how to do that. Um, but yes, I would start a podcast. It's going to add more value to the clients that you train. And then ultimately, if you are consistent enough with it, you'll be able to create digital products um, from your podcast. And you can drive those who listen to it to your website where they can go buy something. Uh, very similar to what I do on this podcast. Okay, the next question is, how can I take more time away from my training sessions? And I'm assuming the coach who sent me this is feeling burnt out. They feel like they just don't have any time away. They don't have any time off. And I know that feeling. That feeling really sucks. And I'm going to show you a strategy that I personally use and I hope this helps you and um, this will allow you to take more time away from training. So really step one is if you don't have any time away from training, that means that you're working every day, which is something that I used to do. And um, <laughs> I, I remember my oldest brother, he'd always be like, dude, you have to take at least a day off. And I always thought in my head, just no, I, I, I just, I need to train every day. And I felt like it was something that I needed to do. And I was obligated to train every day. But the reality is like, if you do that, you don't, you don't have any free time. Uh, and you don't have any time where you can relax. And if you're a coach, if you're training kids, you're always on your feet, you're always moving around. And when you're young, you can get away with that. Like when you're in your like early 20s, like when I was doing that, yeah, you can do that. But at the same time, you should have scheduled time away from your training business. And what I do now is radically different <laughs> than what I used to do. Um, and the way I have it set up now is I have a contract that parents sign. So when they train with me, they sign the contract. And on the contract, it states that every 90 days, I am gone for a week. So like I won't be there on a week for an entire week. Like I take an entire week away from training and I do that every quarter. And the reason why I do that though is so I can actually have scheduled time away from training. And my schedule now is way different than how it was like two or three years ago. Um, I only train on, right now I train three days a week and it's three days in a row. And then, you know, I don't train on the weekends. Um, I, I started to really guard my time and spend my time differently. Um, but the best thing you can do, if you want to have more time away, you need to make that uh, within your terms when parents sign up for your program. So they understand, you know what, like you're going to be gone. Um, you're going to take time away. And if you don't do that, then you're always going to be um, stuck at the field or the court, wherever you train. Um, so I hope... That answers your question. And uh, feel free, send me more questions, guys, at Twitter or Instagram. Just find my name, Ben Neighbors, and I'll make sure to do more podcasts like this. If you guys like it, leave me some feedback, and i um, love to do this again. Hey, Coach, thanks for listening to our show today. If you enjoyed the content, I'd really appreciate it if you would leave us a five-star review here on iTunes. If you want to attract more committed clients, generate more income, and create more freedom in your life, you'll want to check out our Inner Circle Mastermind. This exclusive group is reserved for coaches who want to build and scale a dominant sports training business. To learn more about the Inner Circle program, simply head over to our website at www.buildmysportsbiz.com. Thanks again for listening. I'll catch you later.